Hello, welcome everyone to the next Gen4 International Forum webinar. <clears throat> Today's presentation is an introduction to nuclear reactor design. We appreciate your attendance very much. Before we get started, there's some housekeeping things I want to talk about. Uh, the Q&A pod, you can type your questions uh, right into the pod and we will address those at the end. Uh, there are presentation slides available for your download in the presentation slide pod. If you just click that, um, it will allow you to download that PDF. And we appreciate your feedback and welcome your comments. Uh, there's a survey link in the notes pod and if you were willing to participate, I think there's about six short questions. Um, that gives us great feedback and helps us improve uh, the presentations um, and lets us know the, the target um, on the material, whether we're, we're reaching our audience well. We appreciate your feedback very much. And with that, um, I think we will go ahead and get started. Uh, the Director of Material and Chemical Technology for DOE Office of Nuclear Energy is Dr. Patricia Pavier. Patricia Pavier is also the Chair uh, for the Education Task Force involved in bringing you these webinars. Um, and without any further delay, I will let her do the presentation, or excuse me, do the introduction for today's speaker, Patricia. Yes, thank you so much, Bertha. Uh, good morning, everybody. It's my great pleasure to have you today uh, participating to the Gen4 uh, webinar series. It's going to be presented by uh, Claude Renault. Uh, he uh, has been working at the Commissariat à l'énergie atomique, the French Alternative Energies and Atomic Energy Commission for more than 30 years, research and develop as well as education and training. He's a senior expert at the CEA and a professor. In 2010, he joined the INSTN, the National Institute for Nuclear Science and Technology, where he's currently international project leader. His expertise and teaching experience mainly cover thermal hydraulics design and operation of nuclear reactors, including the different families of reactors, in particular the concept of Generation 4. Claude Renault came to CEA in 1984 in the development team of Qatar, the reference CEA EDF Riva RRSN computer code for the simulation of accidental transients in pressurized water reactor was subsequently responsible at the national and international level for several projects in the areas of severe accidents and nuclear fuel behavior. In 2001 and 2009, he was heavily involved in R&D programs devoted to future nuclear reactors. He intervened at the Directorate of Nuclear Energy, definition and monitoring of research programs on the different concepts of fourth generation reactors. Each chair of the steering committee of the molten salt reactor in Gen 4. So it's my great pleasure to have uh, Claude today. And Claude, I give you the, the floor, and I'm really happy that you could give um, this webinar. Thank you again, Claude. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia. I have subtitled the webinar from Neutron to Gen 4, which is a rather ambitious program. Welcome to all of you. Uh, the GIF initiative has led to reconsider some of the options adopted in the past and stimulated the investigation of new tracks for long-term sustainable nuclear energy. To better understand to what extent Generation 4 reactors should be different and to recognize their main characteristics requires some basic knowledge in the fundamentals of nuclear reactor design. What is behind the terms criticality, breeding, fast or thermal neutrons? How to select the ingredients, the coolant, the moderator, neutron spectrum, fuel materials, and composition? And how to choose the ad hoc combinations to design nuclear reactors in line with generation four criteria, in particular, sustainability? Uh, this is the objective of this rather technical webinar targeting civil society stakeholders. Please stay with us. Uh, CP1, uh, Chicago pile number one, is known as the first nuclear pile. 
In December 1942, Enrico Fermi led a group of scientists in initiating the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction of fission. After piling up bricks of uranium and, graphi and graphite used as a moderator, they observed criticality the progressive increase of neutron flux. The process was under control and was stopped very early after reaching a very small power level by inserting neutron absorbent into the system. That is for me the occasion to quote a number of technical terms to be known by the designer of a nuclear reactor, such as chain reaction, fission, criticality, neutron, moderator, absorbent, and uranium. Explanations are coming. Ten years later now, uh, the first nuclear electricity production dates back from 1951 with the EBR-1 reactor in USA at Idaho. It was a very low power reactor only 200 uh, kilowatt electric volts. But something very peculiar is that EBR-1 was also the first fast neutron uh, reactor. So nuclear power was removed by uh, a liquid mixture of sodium and potassium, called NAC, molten at ambient temperature, acting as a coolant. The nuclear fuel was made of uranium at high enrichment. The process of plutonium formation, conversion of breeding, was also demonstrated. So you can see that additional terms have appeared now, fast neutron, coolant, enrichment, plutonium, and breeding. So this is for the future. Let's be more technical now. Uh, firstly, it must be clearly understood that the potential of nuclear energy is fantastic. Uh, the process by which nuclear energy is produced today is fission. And to give some uh, orders of magnitudes, uh, you can read that the burning of one ton of fossil oil produces 0.5 megawatt per day. day. 0.5 megawatt day. Uh, in comparison, the total fission of only one gram of uh, uranium-235 produces one megawatt day, twice as much. But this is only one gram. So this means that the, pot the energy potential of nuclear fission is two million times higher than fossil fuels like oil, gas, and coal. How to take the best advantage of this potential? This is actually the challenge proposed to nuclear designers. This is our challenge today. Uh, the only resource that can uh, directly be used for nuclear energy production is natural uranium. Natural uranium is made of so-called two isotopes, uranium-238 and uranium-235. They differ by the number of neutrons in the nucleus, but have the same chemical behavior. Uranium-235, the single fissionable component of natural uranium, only accounts for 0.7%. So this is not a very good start for the story. Um, nuclear fuel is basically uh, a mixture of uranium-235, acting as a fissile material, and uranium-238, uh, called a fertile material. I will come back to it. It is possible, under certain conditions, to directly use natural uranium. However, more than 80% of reactors under operation today make use of enriched uranium. Enrichment is the process by which the fissile content is increased from 0.7% to a higher content. For PWRs, for example, uh, the fissile uranium-235 fraction is between 3 to 4%. Uh, the figures on this slide 
show the configuration of nuclear fuel for PWRs. The fuel is made of uranium oxide pellets inserted into a zirconium metallic tube. The fuel element, pellet plus tube or clad, is called a fuel rod. About 50,000 of such fuel rods are assembled to form the core for a PWR 1300 megawatt electrical. <coughs> Fission consists in splitting of heavy nuclei by neutrons, releasing both energy and free neutrons. Uranium-235 is a fissionable material that is an isotope capable of undergoing fission after capturing a neutron. The fission of uranium-235 or uranium-5 results in the generation of two fission fragments or fission products, for example, krypton-92 and barium-141, as seen in the figure, such uh, fission fragments or fission products are unstable radioactive elements and should be considered as nuclear waste. Fission is also accompanied by the emission of several neutrons. The average number of neutrons produced, nu, is between two and three. All nuclear reactors use a chain reaction to induce a control rate of nuclear fission in fissile material. This process is possible because the number of neutrons produced per fission is greater than one. In a nuclear reactor, another essential mechanism is competing with fission to absorb neutrons. This is called conversion or breeding, consisting of neutron capture by uranium-238 or U8 nuclei. As a result, Plutonium-239 or PU-9 is produced. PU-9, which does not exist naturally, is a very good fissile material. So to summarize, uranium-8, uranium-238, is called a fertile material that is an isotope not fissionable, but which can be converted into a fissile isotope. In summary, when a neutron is absorbed by um, a uranium-5 nucleus, one neutron, one neutron disappears, and uh, sorry, okay, one neutron disappears, and one fissile nucleus disappears in the same time by absorption, fission, or capture. Therefore. Uh, the primary concern for nuclear reactor design is what I call pampering both neutrons and fissile nuclei. This can be translated into two main challenges. The first is to be able to sustain a chain reaction of fission. This is a feasibility condition, also called criticality. This is a matter of neutron balance. The second is to optimize fuel exhaustion or depletion in the fuel in order to increase fuel utilization, taking advantage of the breeding mechanism. This time, this is a matter of fissile material balance. Uh, the probability of a specific nuclear reaction like fission or absorption depends on the nature of the interacting nucleus and the neutron kinetic energy. This is expressed by the microscopic cross-section sigma. And uh, on this figure, you can see the microscopic cross-sections of uranium-5. And uh, it is very clear, uh, it must be known that the probability of reaction is proportional to this uh, microscopic cross-section and to the concentration of nuclei. Uh, the probability for a fission to occur is strongly dependent on neutron energy or velocity. And the fission, and the fission probability is much larger for so-called thermal neutrons. 
the figure shows the thermal domain and fast domain. Note that fission neutrons are born fast. And to reach the thermal domain, which looks interesting in terms of probability, uh, neutrons must be strongly slowed down by a moderator like graphite, as it was in the CP1 experiment. Uh, the process of neutron slowing down by a moderator is also called uh, scattering. Uh, fission neutrons, fast neutrons, have a very high velocity corresponding to an average kinetic energy of 2 mega electron volts in this range. The energy range in which the majority of neutrons are eventually absorbed, especially to produce a fission, is determined by the competition between absorption and, and scattering. If most fissions occur at low energy, the reactor will be said in thermal neutron spectrum. Otherwise, otherwise the reactor is said in fast neutron spectrum. Now, is a sustained chain reaction possible? The answer is yes. But we have seen that fission on uranium-5 and absorption on uranium-8 are competing phenomena. Therefore, the feasibility of chain reaction results from this competition. Having a look to the uranium-5 fission probability in red and the uranium-8 capture probability in green, it can be seen that the capture of neutron by uranium-238 is much lower. However, the fraction of uranium-8 in the nu um, in the nuclear fuel is usually much larger than the fraction of uranium-235, which, is, which can be uh, problem problematic. For natural uranium, for example, uh, the feasibility of a chain reaction is very questionable because the content of fissile U5 is only 0.7%. So the content of uranium-8 is about 140 times larger than uranium-5. The overall fission probability of uranium-5 is therefore challenged by the overall capture probability of uranium-8. But the situation can be improved by increasing the fissile fraction in the fuel. What is the condition for self-sustained reaction? I'm sorry, there is a problem of this slide because the equation is not uh, displayed. So I will see what's going, what's going on in the future. So uh, the potential for self-sustained reaction is measured by the multiplication factor K. Uh, this multiplication factor is a ratio between neutron production and neutron absorption plus leakage. So the value of K depends not only on the composition of the fissile medium, but also on its dimensions because of the ability of neutrons to escape out of the reactor. So to summarize, the, the mechanisms affecting the multiplication factor are fission of fish, fissile isotopes like uranium-5 in the fuel, not, and neutron captures on fuel, uranium-8, uranium-5, on the coolant, on the moderator, on the metallic structures, and on fission products. And the last mechanism affecting K is neutron leakage out of the core. The condition for a self-sustained reaction is, K, is that K is larger than 1. K equal to 1 is called the criticality equation or condition. Oh, yes, I, I'm really sorry for you because the equation cannot be, cannot be displayed. Claude, if you want, we can, we can pause the PowerPoint presentation and try loading the PDF version, and perhaps I'll show up there. I apologize for this. Hopefully, yes. Okay. Can you, can you do, can you do that? Yes. Let, give me just one minute. I apologize, people. I'm very sorry for this. Thank you. Sorry for everybody.
Yes. Uh, okay. I told all of you that this is a rather technical uh, webinar, so there should be some uh, equations, even simple. In the other case, you could be disappointed. Upload in progress. Patricia and Bertha, is it okay? Uh, upload in progress, okay. Yep, sorry, it's loading. Is it the same, uh, same version? Um, version 6, yes. Yeah, okay. Good. I, yeah, I apologize. I ran through these. There's going to be a little bit of... Um, okay, I, I, I check it. Yes, it looks, it looks better. Yes, it looks good. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. So coming back to uh, slide number 14, uh, the multiplication factor can be written as a fission rate at the numerator and at the denominator, the absorption rate on the fuel, absorption rate on other me media, and leak rate. So I have to scroll. OK. So the multiplication factor k can be rewritten as follows. Yes, some uh, characters are still missing, but it's not so important. So um, k can be rewritten with at the numerator fuel related only fuel related e effect and at the denominator other effects like absorption on other mat materials and leak rate um, the parameter uh, at the numerator is called eta is written eta and is called the reproduction factor For uranium fuel, which is a mixture of uranium-8 and uranium-5, this eta can be written like this. Uh, I'm a little bit sorry. Uh, so eta can be written with at the numerator um, and formula depending on only on ethyl isotope, which is uranium-5, and at the denominator. That is the effect of the fissile fraction or enrichment E. So as a whole, uh, K is a function of the nature of the fissile isotope, in general uranium-235, and fuel composition with enrichment, and the core geometry uh, for neutron leakage. Okay, so it's almost good. So uh, we have seen that a necessary condition for criticality is that the reproduction factor eta is uh, the, is that the reproduction factor eta is significantly uh, larger than one. So on this table, you have the reproduction factor eta for uranium fuel according to the fissile fraction E. It can be seen that using, using fast neutrons, criticality is impossible with natural uranium because eta is very small. It can be obtained, criticality, by increasing the fissile fraction uh, above about 15%. Uh, so in that case, eta becomes larger than 1. Using thermal neutrons, Criticality is possible whatever 
the fissile fraction is, and even for natural uranium. Therefore, uh, two main options can be considered to slow down neutrons. Criticality is then possible whatever the fissile contains. And uranium, natural uranium can be used for strict neutron economy. And the other option is to use fast neutrons and subsequently increase the fissile fraction in the fuel. So today, uh, thermal neutrons uh, are uh, the major reactors under operation, like PWR, BWR, can do, etc. Fast neutron reactors are today poorly represented. As the moderation, how to slow down neutrons. To use thermal neutrons appear as an attractive strike to design a nuclear reactor. A neutron moderator, that is a medium that reduces the velocity of fast neutron, is then needed. The primary requirement for a moderator is its capability to efficiently, uh, to efficiently reduce uh, the velocity of neutrons. This can be characterized by the variation of neutron kinetic energy per collision, which is measured by the parameter C. Uh, other factors uh, are high scattering or high slowing down probability, sigma s, and low neutron absorption, sigma a. The moderation efficiency can be globally evaluated via the moderating efficiency parameter, which is calculated in this, in this table. Uh, it must be known that the nuclei are the more effective to slow down moderate neutrons, that their mass number is lower, closer to the neutrons one. A good moderator is thus a material with at least one element of low atomic weight, like hydrogen, deuterium, carbon, in its composition. The most usual neutron moderator materials are graphite, light water, and heavy water. The winner is heavy water than graphite because of their very low uh, absorption uh, probability. Light water is very efficient at slowing down neutrons, but is very absorbent. However, it has been extensively used as a moderator for light water reactors. Heavy water is the choice made for Kandus, the concept promoted by Canada. Graphite has been used in the past in France and UK, but uh, graphite moderated reactors are poorly represented today only in UK. Another question to address is, what is the quantity of moderator required? <coughs> and which core configuration? Uh, the figure shows the multiplication factor k as a function, as a function of the ratio Nm over Nu, number of moderator nuclei, over number of uranium or nuclear or fuel nuclei for natural uranium in a homogeneous core config configuration. Homogeneous means that all core constituents are homogeneously mixed for example, a solution of uranium nitride. The figure shows that with light water and graphite, criticality is impossible. K remains less than one, whatever the moderator content. This is because neutrons are absorbed before being sufficiently slowed down for fission. However, uh, heterogeneous core configuration, for heterogeneous core configuration, criticality becomes possible using light water. So this is a key for the design of light water reactors. A certain fraction of the fission nuclei are replaced by new fissile nuclei resulting from neutron capture on fertile material. 
that regeneration partially compensates the exhaustion of fuel. As you know, neutron capture on uranium-238 produces plutonium-239. The process is called conversion or breeding. The conversion efficiency can be measured using the breeding ratio BR, defined as the ratio of fissile production to fissile consumption. This represents the fissile mass balance. If BR is greater than 1, the reactor produces more fissionable fuel than it consumes. It is called a breeder reactor. A necessary but not sufficient conditions, condition for breeding is that the reproduction factor eta is larger than 2 one neutron for sustaining the chain reaction, another one for breeding a new fissile nucleus. For PWR, the breeding ratio is in the range 0.5 to 0.6. For fast neutron reactors, the breeding ratio can reach 1.2, and this was the case of Super Phoenix in France, for example. So, what are the ingredients of a nuclear reactor? Uh, the ingredients of a fission nuclear reactor are a fuel material that contains enough fissile isotopes, essentially uranium-235 and plutonium-239, or even fertile isotopes. There must be a heat transfer medium called the coolant, which is a liquid or gas, able to extract the heat energy generated in fission fuel. A moderator, that is a material able to slow down fast neutrons or not, this is a choice. And absorbance, that is materials for capturing neutrons and especially for, for the control of the chain reaction. What is the situation today? Uh, the table shows the general characteristics of nuclear reactors brought to industrial development for electricity production and still being operated today. They have been classified according to the fuel type fissile content. Natural uranium, low and rich uranium, medium and rich, or and rich uranium, or medium and rich uranium at the bottom. The table shows in particular the nature of the coolant and of the moderator and some operation parameters like operation pressure and temperature. Families of nuclear reactors can be defined according to the nature of the coolant. So we have light water reactors like PWRs, BWRs and LWGR light water graphite reactor well known as RBM key. Heavy water with PHWR, pressurized heavy water reactors better known as CANDU. Uh, a gas, CO2, like UNGG for France, Magnox for, for, U, for UK, and AGR, this is the GCR family, and sodium, for fast breeder or fast neutron reactors uh, at the bottom. Only fast breeder reactors are operating using fast neutrons. All the others are thermal neutron reactors. The above concepts, with the exception of fast breeder reactors, are viewed as first and second generation of nuclear reactors. As you know, a third generation of nuclear reactors is under development today with ABWR, EPR, and so on. And the winner is, so the graph shows the distribution of nuclear power plants worldwide operated at the end of 2013 according to uh, the different reactor families. Uh, light water reactors, PWRs and BWRs, represent almost 90% of the total installed nuclear electricity. 
Water cool reactors as a whole, also including PHWR and, L and LWGR, represent 98%. Gas cool reactors are only 2%. Fast neutron reactors, fast neutron reactors uh, consist today of two reactors, BN600 and BN800, operated in Russia, representing only 0.2%. So this is too low. So why is a new generation of nuclear reactors needed? Why should we do better than the third generation? So the main drivers for developing a new generation of nuclear reactors can be summarized as follows. Uh, the large-scale development of third-generation reactors uh, challenges uranium resources. Identified conventional resources represent about 160 years of today's consumption. Only about 0.5% uh, of natural uranium is used. The management of nuclear waste will have to be further improved. And having in mind a perspective of fossil fuel shortage, nuclear technology should get prepared to answer other needs than electricity supply, like hydrogen production, process speed, desalination, and so on. And the last point is larger spreading of nuclear, re of nuclear power needs proliferation resistance. As a conclusion, new types of nuclear reactors must be designed in order to ensure energy supply in a context of long-term sustainable development. <coughs> Regarding natural uranium utilization, um, this figure shows the uranium mass balance in the so-called open cycle used in PWRs or light water reactors in general. In PWRs, only 5% of the initial uranium set in reactor and rich uranium is consumed for electricity production due to fuel technological limits. This represents only 05 to 0.6% of the initial natural uranium, which is very, very small. In contrast, breeder reactors or fast neutron reactors only need one ton of uranium-8, depleted uranium and reprocessed uh, uranium, that is converted into plutonium and burned in the core. That's due to the breeding uh, mechanism of fissile fuel. Why fast neutron reactors the breeding issue more precisely. So these graphs show the simplified neutron balance for a PWR and a fast neutron reactor like Super Phoenix. For PWRs, uh, namely PWRs and BWRs, the breeding ratio is only about 0.5 to 0.6 as mentioned earlier. So this is mainly because the number of uh, neutrons produced per fission is only 2.5 in the average. For fast neutron reactors now, the breeding ratio can be as high as 1.25. Uh, and uh, why is the fast neutron reactor neutron balance better for breeding? Uh, First of all, uh, I would like to strongly mention that this neutron balance is more favorable to breeding in fast spectrum and breeding plutonium 239, both conditions. This is mainly because the number of neutrons produced by fission is higher. In fast spectrum, the conversion can be further improved by taking advantage of neutrons leaking out of the fissile core. Uh, in the fertile blanket. So this is the reason why we can go from 0.8 to 1.2. And we have done it. Another essential issue is waste management. 
the management of nuclear waste will have to be further improved, minimizing the long-term potential radiotoxicity and heat load of ultimate waste dedicated to the geological repository. Uh, the figure shows the composition of spent fuel for PWRs. As you know, as you may know, 96% of the content of spent fuel is recyclable, uranium plus plutonium. Only 4% should be considered as nuclear waste, consisting of fission products and minor actinides. Minor actinides are heavy isotopes like americium, curium, form is the core by neutron capture and decay. In the open, in the open cycle, spent fuel is considered as nuclear waste as a whole. Plutonium recycling and additional waste management strategies are based on selective sorting of radioactive isotopes. In this kind of strategy, uh, plutonium is clearly the major contributor to the long-term radiotoxicity of spent fuel. Uh, this point can be fairly solved by plutonium recycling. After plutonium, minor actinides have the major impact to the long-term radiotoxicity. So the solution for minor actinides is transmutation. The ratio fission to capture is favorable to minor actinide fission with fast neutrons. Therefore, uh, fast neutron reactors can do this job. GIF reopens the scope and reconsiders the choices made in the past during the industrial development of nuclear reactors as seen in the previous discussion. So we are now facing the blank page. Potential options are listed here in terms of coolants, moderators, fuel components, fissile and fertile. So some newcomers appear like for the coolant uh, molten salt, uh, helium, lead, and lead basements, for, for example, in addition to water, gas, uh, CO2, and uh, sodium. <coughs> uh, another newcomer in the discussion is thorium sodium-232 and uranium-233, which is a fissile uh, material associated to uh, thorium. So you may know that thorium is not fissile in itself, but can be converted into fissile uranium-3 uh, by neutron capture. Almost all combinations are possible, and many of them were designed and built and most of them have actually been operated, sometimes at a very small scale. <coughs> the, the, the first choice is the choice of neutron spectrum, fast or thermal. So this figure shows typical neutron spectrum, that is the number of neutrons according to their energy for a PWR in blue, and the fast neutron reactors like Phoenix. Uh, what is clearly seen is that a fast neutron reactor is a reactor designed for operation with fast neutrons. This is almost a joke. So fast neutron or thermal neutrons, the choice should be guided by uh, criticality, breeding, and transmutation potential as discussed earlier. <coughs> the potential of uranium and plutonium as fuel components has been discussed earlier. Another option might be uh, thorium and uranium-3. Uh, it can be seen on this table that having a look to the reproduction factor, 
Uranium-3 derived from thorium is a very good fissile uh, isotope. We can also see from this table that bearing in mind that a necessary condition for breeding is that the reproduction factor should be uh, greater than 2, it can be concluded that uranium-235 is not well fitted for breeding. Uh, plutonium-239 should be uh, preferred uh, using fast neutrons because the number of neutrons produced by plutonium-239 is much bigger. Uranium-233 is another very attractive option in the so-called thorium-uranium-3 fuel cycle. What about the, the, the fuel? So the choice of the fissile fertile material has, has been just discussed above. <coughs> Another parameter to be taken into account is the physical chemical nature of the fuel. So the table shows some properties of different mixed uranium plutonium fuels and vision for fast neutron reactors in particular. So oxide, oxide fuel called UOX or MOX have been extensively used. Their thermal conductivity, however, is rather small, about three. <coughs> but the melting temperature is very high, about 2,800 2, Celsius. <coughs> and in addition to that, the resistance to radiation damage is very good. Other options like carbide, uh, nitride and metallic fuels are considered for future reactors. So, what is your choice? So, high density, high density is interesting for core compactness and therefore for competitiveness. High melting temperature and high thermal conductivity are important factors for reactor performance uh, with high temperature, you can have high energy conversion efficiency and also for safety with a better margin for to melt it. So in Gen 4, the, the choice is still very open. So a coolant is a liquid or a gas with adequate properties to remove heat from fuel elements. The choice of a coolant is a rather complicated issue because many different uh, criteria must be combined. The potential coolant families are water, which is an excellent coolant, but also a moderator in the, in the same time, which may not be suitable. Gases, like helium, CO2, opening the door to higher temperature, liquid metals like sodium, lead, and mercury, why not? And the last family I wanted to mention is molten salt. <coughs> the table lists the main requirements and provides the data of a number of candidates. Among liquids, light water and heavy water, which also are moderators, have been favored for thermal neutron reactors in the past and today. For fast neutron reactors, liquid metals such as sodium are well fitted, but some gases like helium can also be considered. As far as uh, gas are concerned, only carbon dioxide and helium have been used in practice. From the thermal hydraulic point of view, helium and CO2 show a rather similar behavior, <coughs> but helium is much better for its neutronical and chemical behavior compared to CO2. Let's go into the Gen 4 uh, now. The Generation 4 International Forum, GIF, 
At Sutton Bean, since 2000, the most active think tank to materialize the goals and concepts for fourth generation nuclear system. The story actually started in 2000 when 10 countries decided to join their efforts to prepare the development of sustainable nuclear energy. Um, after a while, Russia, Russia and China joined the forum. <coughs> in the first step, GIFT set up the new requirements for this fourth generation of nuclear systems and identified the key technologies to be de developed in multilateral cooperation. Such technologies should be marketable from 2040 onwards. So you can see the different criteria or requirements for sustainable nuclear energy. I have mentioned some of them. Such innovative solutions for waste minimization, natural resource conservation, natural uranium, and proliferation resistance. Perform continuous progress on competitiveness, safety, and reliability and develop the potential for new applications like hydrogen production, thin fuels, desalinated water processes. <coughs> After one or two years, uh, GIF selected six reference nuclear systems having the best potential to match the goals of fourth generation. I don't want to discuss in detail the, the six systems selected by GIF. Uh, you can see the webinar given by John Kelly last September and upcoming seminars in the series. So I will just mention them by their name. So the first is Sodium Fast Reactor SFR, Lead Fast Reactor LFR, gas fast reactor GFR, all of them with fast neutrons. And uh, the gas fast reactor is with helium. Very high temperature reactor helium plus graph graphite. So this is a thermal neutron reactor. Supercritical water reactor, which uh, could be thermal or fast, but uh, very difficult to, to achieve with fast neutrons. And the last is the so-called molten salt reactor by which uh, fuel components are dissolved in a, salt, um, in a salt mixture. So the fuel is liquid. If you want to know more, uh, this initial selection was documented in the so-called uh, GIF technology uh, roadmap that was published in December uh, 2002. So for your information, uh, the following table <coughs> shows some general characteristics of the Gen 4 systems. So uh, obviously, the values in the table are fairly indicative because the design of Generation 4 systems is presently ongoing. This is a R&D development work. There is today, today there is no Gen 4 system under operation at, in the world. <coughs> if you, in this table, you can compare a PWR, which reflects uh, typical uh, nuclear reactors today with reference characteristics to uh, the six system I have mentioned earlier. Some conclusions and perspectives now. <coughs> so GIF is stimulating the innovative design of new, new, rec new nuclear systems, taking into account the criteria for long-term development of nuclear energy, in particular safety, competitiveness, sustainability, proliferation resistance, and physical protection. Uh, the fundamentals for nuclear reactor design, which was the subject of the today's webinar, Gen 4 or not, are criticality, which is the feasibility, 
and breeding nuclear fuel utilization. To be very brief, fast neutron reactors offer strong opportunities for sustainability because of fast neutrons themselves. They are the best fitted for breeding and transmutation. However, breeding can also be achieved using thermal neutron reactors, but the feasibility constraints are strong. An example of this is the molten salt reactor. And to conclude, uh, today's webinar was strongly focused on sustainability issues, that is the best use of natural uranium resources and minimization of high level nuclear waste. Other important issues were not addressed today, but should be and are being addressed, like safety, competitiveness, proliferation resistance, and physical protection. Uh, thank you. If, if you want to know more, more about Gen4 system, stay on the line with the GIF ETTF webinar series, for which uh, the next sessions are shown here. So in, Decem in December, sorry, in December there will be a, a webinar dedicated to sodium cooled fast reactor by Dr. Robert Hill from ANL. In January, very high temperature reactors by Carl King from DOE. And in February, gas cooled fast reactors by Dr. Alfredo Vasil from CEA France. You are welcome for some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rowell. Thank you very much. Um, I've been advised that the download PDF has the variables, the missing equations, um, so I invite everyone to, to take the time and the opportunity to download that PDF um, and use that for your reference. Uh, thank you for your patience while we work through the technical issues. We do practice these webinars, um, so it is unclear why those equations or why those variables um, do not display in this meeting room today, but we will uh, continue working through those technical challenges. So again, the PDF okay, that is available for download does have all of the correct variables and the missing um, equations. I apologize very much for that technical difficulty. Um, if you have questions for Dr. Renault, please do type them into the Q&A chat box and we will take as many questions as we have time for now. Okay, so uh, we talked about 20 minutes, something like that, 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, and I can see along the top in the Q&A chat box, Dr. Renault, do you see there are two tabs? One is a participant view and one is the presenter view, and I can see some um, I cannot see any question at the moment. Q&A, yes. So there's a question, what does proliferation resistance mean on slide 23? Uh, I cannot see the question myself. So oh, do you see the, the Q&A pod? There's so in the Q&A part, yes, I see the Q&A part. Along the very top, there are two yeah, yeah. tabs. Ah, One uh, has a presenter view. Ah, if you okay, I, ca there I you can go. see. Oh, okay, it was not active, so I could not follow. Uh, I could not follow questions coming. Oof. So I don't know how to manage this. Uh, so you mentioned slide 23. Yes. Yeah. 23. There it is. Yeah. The question is, what does proliferation resistance mean? Oh, prolif proliferation resistance means that uh, nuclear materials should not be uh, taken by uh, bad willing people and should not be used for other applications that uh, civil uh, uh, nuclear energy production, basically. So I did not man I did not talk about this point because this is uh, uh, first of all uh, a matter of uh, regulations. IAEA is very active in this uh, in this area. There's a question. 
When will the closed fuel cycle become cost effective? Cost effective? Oh, this is not a question for me today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, but the closed fuel cycle is used today in France, has been used for years in France, so it's, uh, it's cost effective today. Um, how this, is, this is not fully closed fuel cycle, but may, maybe the question with using fast neutron reactors uh, when uh, the closed fuel cycle will become cost effective. I cannot answer this question, but I am very positive on that. Then there's a question. Can you please highlight or comment on main safety differences between the majority of reactor types used today versus future Gen 4 reactors? What lessons learned after TMI, Chernobyl, Fukushima accidents will be reflected in new, oops, new reactor yep. designs for Gen 4? And in your opinion, do we have a chance convincing the public and getting their acceptance to build Gen 4 reactors? Uh, yes, I, I did not talk, I did not talk at all, almost at, about safety. Uh, because uh, uh, and competitiveness, because according to me, uh, it should be misunderstood. But this is business as usual. Because uh, present reactor of the third and third generation reactors have set down uh, the rules for uh, for nuclear safety. Today's nuclear safety, and for the future, for fourth generation reactors, these rules or this level of safety should be at least the same. This is what we say in, in Gen 4. So of course, the feedback experience for, from uh, existing uh, reactor families has been taken into account uh, in uh, third generation reactors already, uh, most of them. And for fourth generation, it should be at least the same level. So how to give confidence? Ah, this is uh, this is our work to to give confidence, and uh, safety is always for each of the six nuclear systems uh, a critical point to be addressed by research and development work. Uh, you will see that uh, in uh, upcoming webinars because uh, the six system will be presented one by one, and I'm pretty sure that safety will be at the right place in the presentation to answer your questions. Thank you. The traveling wave reactor concept from TerraPower was not categorized in the presentation. Can you provide an overview on this? <laughs> this is not my topic at all. Ah. Uh, uh, but I know I know this concept. I have some ideas about this concept, feasibility, and so on. But, but basically, this is a fast neutron reactors with uh, uh, specific characteristics for uh, long-term operation without uh, fuel. Uh, fuel management but well no 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 comment today but maybe you can ask this type of question of uh, to the presenter of sodium fast reactor or gas gas fast reactor i'm sure uh, they will have some answer to to tell you but i think at the present time they are a very initial stage of development the traveling wave reactor Thank but you. interesting then there's a question. Um, Russia just put online their BN-800 sodium-cooled fast breeder reactor. Do you have any insight on why Russia is pursuing this type of reactor? BN-800? BN yes. What is the question? It says, Russia just put online their BN-800 sodium-cooled fast breeder mm -hmm. reactor. Yes. Do you have any insight on why Russia is pursuing this type of reactor? Uh, what I what I know, uh, I did not check recently, but <coughs> BN BN six hundred has been operated during several tens of years, and BN eight hundred uh, uh, operation was started uh, last year, I think, in two thousand fifteen. But I don't know what is the real status today. Was it successful or not? Uh, I cannot tell you. This is a question to my Russian colleagues. What I want to tell you is that BN600 and BN800, 
like Super Phoenix and Phoenix in France, should not be considered as fourth generation reactors. Great. Can you please say a few words on who is developing the six concepts? Is there active, uh, active development on all six? Uh, sorry, could, could could you show me the, the question? It's a question by by whom? By by Daniel, you, Patricia? Daniel Weston. I could not catch the question properly. Um, I'm you, William. Are you able to see the questions on your um, Q and A thoughts? Think. I don't see it, Berta. I just see, could you please say, and then I cannot read. To the right, there yeah. should be a scroll bar that um, will allow you to yeah, I see. Okay. But so the question... If... Yeah, please close. Sorry. Uh, I, I could not catch a question. I, I don't know who is the author of this question. Is it Little William or... Daniel Veslin? Yeah, so I'm going to read it again. Maybe the French accent will help. So. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please say a few words on who is developing the six concepts? Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, In the past, I was very much aware about that, but it's changing. Sorry. So again, I think this type of information wa was given by uh, by John Kelly. Yes, it was L in the first last, webinar. last September, I think, you, because yes. he's still fully involved, of course, in. Uh, in Gen 4, he has uh, better information about that. Uh, well, yes, I, I can say a few words. For sodium fast reactors, it is uh, being studied by many different countries, including France, uh, USA, Russia, Japan, uh, and so on, China. <coughs> uh, for lead fast reactor, it is more restricted. So I think uh, there are some European projects and uh, maybe mainly, and Russia did something, of course, for gas fast reactors uh, cooled by helium. So France initiated uh, the research on this concept. And now uh, there is a demonstration reactor of GFR uh, under study in Central Europe uh, in uh, um, <laughs> with different countries, including, I think, Hungary, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia, and uh, I think Poland, with some support by Europe. For the VHTR today, I think VHTR is, is being studied by USA yes. and by, by other and some other countries, like uh, I would like to mention China, of course, uh, because China is uh, constructing a prototype reactor HTRPM, I know that, which is under completion. For supercritical water reactors, I think the interest is more focused to a small number of people or countries like uh, Canada, of course, and uh, maybe Japan. Yes. So yes. we have done this. We have done this in France, but uh, now uh, we have given up for a while. And the molten for the molten salt reactor, there is an increasing interest in the world actually. So molten salt reactor is still uh, studied by France, not CEA, mainly, but uh, mainly CNRS, <coughs> and also China, according to what I know. Is, uh, is studying the opportunity to develop a demonstration reactor of molten salt reactor. And uh, there are other actors in the world. I think this is uh, interesting to follow, the progress on the MSR. 
and I can add uh, to you, Claude, that uh, all the webinars have been archived. So if you go back to John Kelly's presentation on the GIF website uh, to the either the PDF or the recorded version to the slide 25, and you will have all the active R&D collaboration on the Gen4 system. Yeah, okay. So what, what I forgot to mention for the molten salt reactor is that the molten salt reactor should be considered more or less as, as a family. And there is another type of uh, uh, molten salt cooled reactor which is being studied by, by USA mainly uh, with solid fuel and uh, uh, liquid salt as a coolant. So with Charles Forsberg and so on. Then there's a question, can you mention any effects of small percentages of U-234 in natural uranium? Uh, sorry, but again, uh, it's difficult for me to understand <laughs> the question with my phone and my English, maybe. <laughs> so who, who was talking? Can you mention any effects of small percentage of U-234 in natural uranium? 234. Wow. 234? Yeah, yes. yes, in natural uranium, there is a very small fraction of uh, uranium 234. Very, very small. Very, very, very small. So I, I did not mention it. Does it have any effect? S I guess that's their question. So the fraction of uranium-234, I don't, I don't really understand the rationale. So the fraction of uranium-234 in natural uranium is 0 0.005%. Great. Very, very, very small. Um. I'm not sure this question, let's see. How is the violent reaction of sodium with water handled at today's level of development? <laughs> uh, uh, again, this is not a question for me today. I can tell you something, but this, uh, be ready to ask this type of question next month. <laughs> okay, I can tell you something anyhow. Uh, uh, in France and uh, probably in Russia, we have some experience in the operation of uh, fast neutron reactors cooled by sodium. So we have many years of feedback experience on, on that. Uh, for Gen 4 reactors, uh, there are several tracks being explored uh, to avoid any potential uh, chemical reaction between uh, sodium and water. Uh, one way is to uh, cancel sodium for the intermediate uh, loop or circuit and substituting sodium by something else not reacting with water, like lead, for example. So, so this is a potential uh, design option for a sodium, sodium cool reactor with sodium in the primary side lead or something else not reactive in the, in the secondary circuit, and water for energy conversion. Another option which is deeply uh, investigated in France is to substitute uh, water steam by something else for energy conversion, uh, for example, gas. So in the Astrid prototype being studied in France with other partners, uh, we are investigating the possibility to develop uh, helium or uh, nitrogen uh, turbines for energy conversion it, instead of water steam. So in that case, there would not be any possibility of contact between sodium and uh, water because there is no more water. What main nuclear data needs do you see relevant for Gen 4 reactors? Uh, can you repeat again? Real sorry. What main nuclear data needs do you see relevant? Nuclear, nuclear, nuclear what? Sorry. Data. 
data. It's from um, from Ali Al Adili. What main nuclear data needs do you see relevant for Gen4 React? Maybe he can type in some clarification. Yes. Most BWR, PWR change fuel every 18 to 24 months. What would that be for an FNR? I don't know. Because, <laughs> because um, um, there, are, there, are two, uh, there are FNRs of second or third generation, OK? like BN600, BN800, and there are FNRs of fourth generation. And FNRs of fourth generation do not exist today. So this is something to be considered. This is a criterion. What's the main driver for the new builds, including the fourth generation? What's the main driver for building? Yeah, for new builds. For new build? Correct. For new build in the fourth generation? Correct. This is it? Um, probably I was not very clear in my in my webinar because the the criteria for developing fourth generation reactors have been shown during the webinar and they are mentioned here. And uh, again, such Gen 4 system, uh, they are planned to be marketable only from 2040. Okay, be aware of that. Is EDF utilizing a long-term storage solution for spent fuel or still storing spent fuel at the individual sites? Okay, so uh, you'd better get in touch with EDF, but uh, in France, you, you may know that um, we are reprocessing spent fuel. So spent fuel is stored for, for a while uh, in the same place as nuclear, nuclear power plants, and then is reprocessed in a reprocessing plant we have uh, in France in order to uh, to sort out uranium, plutonium, and uh, and wastes. So this is very clear. So the solution is very well in line with uh, generation four requirements. There's a there's a question that says, what do you think? Which concepts among the six will be built finally? Which one will be built first as a demonstrator? Um, gen generation four is a, is a R and D process. Okay, the objective of uh, of GIF is to uh, to uh, to stimulate research and development on uh, the six concepts, and to share as good as possible the R and D uh, results. So. Um, the six concepts were selected a long time ago because they were selected in 2001 or two, and they have remained the same uh, until now. So this means that the six concepts have some potential to be developed in the in the future, and we are still in the R&D process. Okay. Another point is. Um, the national, the national context for each country that can be different, and the, the requirements and uh, the selection criteria could be different from one country to another. And another criterion is the feedback experience each country can have from uh, sodium fast reactor or lead, lead fast reactors or high temperature reactors, for example, which could speed up uh, the, the schedule. But all six concepts, they have some, uh, still have some uh, chance to be developed in the future. And uh, there are several demonstration reactors or prototypes that are planned or being constructed today. They will be mentioned in the, in the future webinars, clearly. 
but you sh we should not cancel any of them at the moment. I think you actually, in that response, addressed this question as well, which reads, Monsieur, which of the six types of the fourth generation um, do you prefer and why? Sorry again, uh, can, you, can you repeat? Of the six types of fourth generation reactors, which one do you prefer and why? Me. <laughs> That's what the question reads. <laughs> this is some kind of trap. <laughs> clearly, clearly, I don't answer this question. But uh, the guy, uh, the lady who asked the question, can uh, keep in touch with me, and uh, we can discuss about that by phone. <laughs> But I don't want to, <laughs> there you go. Uh, there you go. to discuss this here today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not Ma seeing. Um, I cannot read the, the question on the. Ah, maybe I can. No. I, I can read the beginning of the question, but not the end. It's very, very inconvenient. The, um, on your right-hand side, there should be a toolbar that allows you to... Yes. That. Yes, to go, to go up and down, but, uh, uh, but the questions are, are not complete. So I see the, the beginning, for example, there was a question by Charles Whitaker, so, uh, no, uh, Little Williams. Since the, this was an R&D discussion, why wasn't, and then I cannot read. Ah, why maybe I can do, okay, maybe, I don't know what to do. Okay. Since this was an R&D discussion, why wasn't fusion discussed? Ah, no, fusion is not considered as a fourth generation uh, technology, so so it was not discussed. So I only mentioned the energy potential of fusion, which is in the same order of magnitude as fission, with respect to uh, uh, the quantity of. Uh, initial material. So now I know how to how to display the question. Oh good. Ah, okay, okay, I oh, see. Good. Monsieur, of the six types of fourth generation reactors, which one do you prefer and why? So okay, I answered. So let's keep in touch, Michael. So what do you think, which concept among the six will be built finally? So I also answer is still very open. Which one will be built first as demonstrator? Um, let me think about that. Maybe as trade for sodium fast reactor. There is a, dem there is a, a demo uh, using the LED technology which is called Alfred. I don't know what is the present status. So there is a HDRPM uh, being uh, completed, constructed and completed by the Chinese, but they, are, they have lowered the target temperature, so uh, I don't know if it should be con fully considered as a fourth generation now, but probably in the future. What else? Uh, Some people are, are still there. What main nuclear data needs do you see relevant for Gen 4 reactors? So nuclear data. Well, don't, don't really know, but uh, not so much. M maybe to improve our knowledge about the thorium, thorium cycle. Cost effective. Uh, 
Okay, I think we went on. We went through the N800, uh, the traveling wave reactor safety proliferation resistance. Okay. Any any other question? Any additional question now? Because I think we have went through. Okay, I think. I think there's I've, a new question. Are the PRPP concerns equally high at reprocessing? Are the PRPP concerns equally high at reprocessing? Uh, I, I would like to say uh, yes. Uh, PRPP uh, relates to all steps of uh, nuclear fuel. Should be. And this is what, be, what is being done. So there are still 55 people online. You're still welcome. But I, I do not see additional questions. Ah. I, think, I think most of it is um, accolades for the presentation and commentary at this point. OK. Uh, and so I don't know if there's somebody from NEA OECD, yes. uh, Roger Garbil, who yes. said that uh, NEA nuclear data high priority request list are available at the OECD NEA website. Oh, thank you very much, Roger. Very good information. I think you did very good, uh, Claude. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, was I was very much disturbed by the um, by the display. With I'm very the sorry. The about the uh, no, I'm, uh, Bertha, it's. Uh, I don't under, I don't understand what is uh, I don't know what is the reason for that, but it was a little bit disturbing and uh, probably not not only for me, unfortunately. Maybe we can do it again <laughs> <laughs> in the future. Okay, so I think we're good, Bertha. What do you think? I think we're good. Okay, thank you. thank you again for your patience while we work technical issues. I will continue to pursue that after today's presentation and find out I can discover yes. what the difference between the practice meeting room and the and the live webcast room. Um, I, I'm I'm honest I'm not sure at this point if it's just a font recognition or a or a display forward and back, but I know the PDF is harder to work through the way it scrolls. Um, yes. Okay, okay okay Berta, please tell me what was wrong according to you after investigating. I will. I will follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And um, I guess we will meet again on the 15th of December at the presentation yeah. of Dr. Robert Hill on sodium fast reactor. Uh, it will be uh, live at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Washington, D.C. And uh, again, uh, thank you so much, Claude, for an excellent presentation and for